Just put one foot in front of the other. Just one more foot. Have you found yourself saying these words as you tried to navigate the news, the weather challenges, and personal and business challenges that have been unfolding for us in the last few years? How are you coping? How is your mental health? And do you have triggers? It's easy to look at the challenges in front of us, maybe the ones beside us, and often we look behind us too. And this is often giving us a feeling of despair or desperation. How do you transform those feelings into gratitude, trust, and celebration? It can be a very fine line. Today, Charlene will be sharing her experiences with the wildfires of British Columbia over the last few weeks and the weather challenges of drought, flood, typhoons experienced by the Moyo family in Malawi in Africa. What provides resiliency? How do you face the moment, the day, the week? What transitions you from feeling helpless to feeling hopeful? And how does courage bring you back to your power? You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. This is sponsored by the Cape Breton Tea Company and Dance Debut Inc. And I'm very excited to welcome back my sister, Charlene Waynes. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be um, joining you from my house again, back in West Kelowna. We've been out of the house for a week. Um, we weren't, we were right on the edge of the alerts and the orders and chose to go into Kelowna for the week. So we just came home yesterday, but so many here, um, thousands of people were on alert and on order and are just starting to come back into town some still aren't back in town but it's nice to actually be back home and not quite as smoky in town finally so mm. quite a change from the last week from a week ago when it was just you know you couldn't see the house next door pretty much it was just horrific so quite a change yeah yeah so before we dive into our topic today let's set up our listeners with some affirmations. So in case they've been experiencing what you've been experiencing or something else that's similar that leaves them with the same feelings, let's get everybody started on balance and flow towards feeling better and feeling the resiliency we hope that they'll have. So I like to pull an affirmation card. This was a quite funny today when I pulled this one and I always chuckle and I know that I've said on many podcasts, I just cut the deck and I get the card. So for those people not familiar, I'm just going to hold up. If you're on the podcast, you won't see this, but it's a black card that has a ribbon of color on the front called mother and child. So it's really about being nurtured. And the deck is called affirmations for the body in the biofield. It has four decks in it. And I usually end up actually in one kind of deck for some reason, but today what popped up was fascist spine flow. And so for those people that are watching, this is a green color. And it has a ribbon of kind of a yellow or a cream color that goes through it. And it represents how the fascia comes off the spine and how that information experienced in the spine is fed out to the organ systems and how they function. And what the card says, this is the, the part that uh, I started chuckling. The note is F. So for anybody who's a singer or a musician um, who might want to play in the key of F or might want to sing in the key of F, then um, that would be the note and the tone that you might want to use. But uh, here's the affirmation. Love, forgiveness, compassion, and hope radiates to others when offered freely and openly. And the gifts in everyone can be realized when love is unconditional. And I thought that's very fitting for today. And then middle thoracic spine. So this would be kind of between the shoulder blades in that area. And a lot of people get stuck there when they, they're not breathing. Um, they're constricted the way that their posture is. So there's an opportunity to open up. And the other, it's part of the heart chakra. And that is love and unconditional giving. So that's the card for today. So if you're having some challenges and you're trying to think about different ways of doing things as we continue the conversation, then I invite you to think about how love and compassion might be able to help you move forward with your, your challenges. Um, do you want to talk about the cup of tea you prepared today, Charlene? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll just pour it. I, I got it ready beforehand. So I've got my my cup and my my brewed, brewed tea. I don't know if it's in focus or not there. 
gonna so she has um an infuser but it's the kind that sits on top of the cup and so she's just letting that uh lovely essence of herbs just pour down into the cup which is a canadian cup so um, the tea is the community which from the cape breton tea company and it's our our fundraiser for our family in in malawi so she's good at judging where to put these <laughs> no, so it doesn't want to go into focus so Fingers. the front of it has uh, lotus flowers on it which is a sign of peace and oh. also um optimism as the flower opens and expands i'm not getting into no it's not going to focus nope <laughs> but we got the tea <laughs> all right there we go for one moment there it is there it is so it's a community um and the idea is um for us all to be in, in community with each other and the, the big thing with the fires too is everyone coming together and this this community is a fundraiser for the family in Malawi that I help um, and that we're helping the Moyo family and and what we've really seen um, fires and everything is how important it is for everyone to come together and help and in a crisis like this um, where everyone is losing things you know you're, you're running um, on, on sometimes, you know, only minutes or hours notice that this disaster is happening, um, potentially losing everything, you don't know. And all of a sudden everybody comes together, you know, people are reaching out and, and giving people things and saying, you know, come here, come stay here, you know, what do you need? Uh, and all of a sudden everybody's helping each other uh, and, and really helping out and saying, you have a need, I have something, can I give it to you? How can I help? What can I do? And, and reaches out selflessly and without thinking. And, and the people who are giving feel better and the people who are receiving are comforted. And it's so natural and in instinctive. And we do that at home. And um, what I'm trying to say is we need to do that elsewhere too. And that, and really with the with community, with the, Tea, that's one way to do it. To buy the tea and the funds that we make from from that, we can reach out and help this family and their community. Um, and it's it's so easy to do. And just like the people here with the fires, they need help, and it's so easy to see because it's right in front of us. But at the same time, there's there's people elsewhere that are having that same crisis happening all the time. We just we just don't have it happening right on their lap. And but for me, this this is one forum where I can say, here's the crisis is happening. You know, let's reach out and and, and help. Mm -hmm. you know, let's feel that crisis happening the same way that we feel this you know, this fire that's happening in my home. Let's feel that fire happening, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere else. You know, let's feel that humanity because it it is it's the same humanity. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just don't see it because it's not happening on our doorstep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and I wanted to mention, because we talked about the tea before, but I I've really, the last couple of weeks, been spending a lot of time with the ingredients. And because I've been cultivating and drying and uh, saving the ingredients um, that grow naturally around us um, to create the blends. Um, I thought I would pull out a couple of ingredients that are in this tea. And this is only one example for people to realize the power of the tea. So as you were saying, you know, if you want to purchase the tea so that you can help them in Malawi, at the same time, if you were to offer that tea to a friend or send it to a family member, this is an opportunity to provide them with a lift as well. So to think about not just could I put the tea in my cupboard, but how could I use that tea to build community around me and to support people in a conversation over tea. So um, there are lots of ingredients in here. So we've got 
rooibos, hibiscus, rosehip shells, lemon balm, peppermint, strawberry leaves, black currant leaves, blackberry leaves, lemongrass, orange blossom, lavender, heather flowers, rose petals, and chamomile. There's a lot in here. And people it will smells, often say, sorry? It, really, it smells good. And it, yeah, I know. It and good. Sometimes it's just open the jar, right? Mine's in a jar rather than the package. And and, and just smell, just, just say it. It's just beautiful. Um, but lots of people will say, oh, I need chamomile because it's it's good for relaxing me before I go to sleep. But I'm right. going to invite you to think a little bit differently about the ingredients. And I've pulled out two cards. And these I've worked with a lot as we've been developing the teas and the different blends. Um, these cards come from, it's not on the back of them. Um, they come from Evelyn Mulders in Kelowna, who, who fortunately did not have to leave her home. Um, oh. Yeah, she was okay. She was watching the fires all around her, but um, she, she was able to stay home. But she looked at the essences of the different herbs and she was able to bring them into categories, same as you would classify things in Chinese medicine. So I chose two that were in the blend. So I chose strawberry and peppermint. And strawberry, I know in Kelowna, has been in the markets for weeks and so luscious when they're fresh. And then peppermint, a lot of people keep that around and sometimes it's added to a tea, sometimes it's put into uh, food, um, but peppermint is something people often go to. And, and too, if they've got a stomach ache, they're gonna grab a mint and, and try to calm it. So the strawberry is, I enjoy the fruition of my labor and firmly embrace life. So when you think about the essence of that within the tea, it emotionally supports disappointment and it also helps with compassion so it's really interesting to think about that herb is sitting there in the tea for you to sip and to, it's lifting you up just by its its essence of what it is it is part of the stomach meridian so it does help with digestion um, part of the earth element and it's part of the root chakra so when people are really needing to feel grounded um, and, and back to basics, then strawberries is something to look for. And the other one is peppermint. And peppermint is I exude graciousness in all that I do. And it supports um, discontentment. Hmm. So again, you know, when we're looking at some of the challenges before us and the way that we could react to it, it's there to support you with that emotion and lift you up. And its mental capacity is for graciousness. And sometimes you might not feel so gracious if it's you that's been leaving your home and you're just trying to cope. But when you're gracious to the people who are there trying to support you as well, there's such a shift that can happen. It's also part of the stomach meridian, but it's part of the heart chakra. So the center of love, our ability to open up and connect with other people. So when you put the fact that you can be grounded and you can help others at the same time through strawberry and peppermint, and that's only two ingredients in the tea, you can see how powerful the tea can be for lifting um, up the people around us and for lifting us up. Um, so I wanted to share that, so. And I, I really like that it, it doesn't feel like a really heavy tea. Like some, some teas are quite dark and mm -hmm. heavy, you know, a, the stronger, heavier tea. Um, it, it's quite a, a gentle mm -hmm. tea. It sounds mm -hmm. funny for a tea. Mm -hmm. So with that, should and, we have a cheer? Sure. <laughs> awesome. So here we go. To those people listening, and we hope that we've lifted you up today and that the tea and the essence of what we're bringing um, provides you with a way of looking at life a little differently. And to all the first responders and the people who are caring for others, cheers to them. Bless their hearts. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> One of the things that's been that's been quite amazing um, during this time that that we've been out of out of our house and mom and dad and kids and everybody have been displaced and over in Kelowna instead of West Kelowna and then watching all the fires and everything carrying on is that the Moyos in 
in Malawi have been constantly checking on us to see if we're okay. Mm -hmm. And this is while some of them are in hospital. They haven't had enough food. They have had their own struggles and, and difficulties and challenges. But but there's been constant messages from them. How are we? How are mom and dad, grandma and grandpa? You know, where are we? Is everyone okay? Where are the fires? How is our homes? Um, you know, but to let us know that they're praying for us. Even the little ones are praying before they, before they, they um, have anything to eat in the morning, before they go to school, they're saying their prayers to make sure that, that, that their prayers are said for us and, and to make sure that, that we know that all of the family are praying for us and, and for our, our homes and for our communities and that, that we know that they're thinking of us and that they're caring and worried and concerned for us and that <clears throat> that that's an important part of their day mm -hmm. is that their thoughts are with us. And then they were also asking, um, you know, it, uh, if, if we're at all connected with, with Maui, and how far away is Maui? And how does that relate? And what do we know about Maui? <clears throat> they don't have a lot of access to be able to search the internet and find out. So then I, you know, I talked to them about, you know, that we're not close to Maui and how far away that is. Um, but they're also praying for them people there, you know, because they, they'd heard that there was also a big fire there and that people were lost. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, they're absolutely concerned about the rest of the world and what's happening. They're not, they're not in this little locked world of, you know, it's, it's just me, 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 us, you know, do something to help us. That's not their way. Mm -hmm. they're, they're loving and caring too that what's happening to everybody else. And are you looked after? And what's happening and what do you need? Mm -hmm. I, I'm fascinated too, because when you think how hard it is for them to get information about the rest of the world, and they're charging their phones at their, and we talked about that before in the previous podcast about how they go to charge their phone so that they can try to get some information. Mm -hmm. They could, they could be trying to get information that would just support what they were trying to do, but they're not, they're actually spending part of their day, which is full of chores we don't have to do. And they're there trying to find out what is happening in the rest of the world mm -hmm. and how can I help? Yeah, that's yeah. remarkable, remarkable. And I was getting the same messages. I'm, I live across the country from you. And, um, you know, we're, we're also watching to see what's happening with the forest fires. And I'm getting messages. How are you? How are things going? You know, um, yeah, even to, to my house. So yeah, just amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and they've certainly gone through huge, huge things like uh, they, they had a massive flood there in January of 2022 that destroyed what they thought would be their, their forever home. It was a brick house that, that was built by hand, like handmade brick. That was Tropical Storm Anna, it was called. And it, there was almost 50,000 people in Malawi that, that were displaced out of their homes. You know, and so they've been homeless since then. Their their home hasn't been rebuilt. And I was thinking about that and thinking, you know, when 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 we're told that something like this wildfire here is is coming, we have cars we can load up. You know, some people here had RVs that they could load their things into. You know, and we think about well, what should I what should I what should I take? Uh, and you know, we grabbed our computers and computer hard drives and photo albums and I grabbed my great grandma's tea set important to me there's a few pictures off the wall this was the second wildfire that we had to pack up from that was evacuated in one in 2009 and it was the same thing then it was a few special mementos of the kids and a couple of special family items and photo albums and you know, the little safe that has some documents in and things like that. And, and this time there's a lot of musical instruments that got there. <laughs> there's some <laughs> valuable guitars. <laughs> it's all 
trombone, a um, lot of musical instruments. One car was pretty much only musical instruments this time. So yeah, the musical instruments and then the photo albums and everything else. So we had all in the vehicle and, and the dog and the hamster. So that was the, the loads. But in Malawi, there, there's no vehicle. It, they, they, the children, uh, the clothes on their back. Um, some of them had shoes. Some of them didn't have shoes. Uh, they may maybe were able to take a couple of the pots and pans with them. That was it. Mm -hmm. and, and just walk. And with the floods, they they lost everything. You know, they they lost. Uh, I think they were able to save a, a goat or two. They lost all the chickens. They lost everything. They they lost their the school books that we'd built up. They lost um, all of the the grains that would make their next meal. They lost everything. There was there, there was no vehicle to pack. They could you know hang on to the hands of the children so they didn't lose the children. Yeah. And that water was gushing down their, the main, um, what, pathway or roadway. Um, main roadway, which, which is not a paved roadway. That, it's like a yeah. hard path roadway. The, the, the house, the brick house was, was washed away. So there's nothing left at that point. You know, there, there is no vehicle to save them. There's no shelter to save them you know it, we we put things into vehicles and drove to another home to stay in another safe home that had running water that had electricity that had power all of these things and then we watched on electronics about what was happening and got all the news and information they have nothing like that and they haven't had that safety since january of 2022 yeah you know that's almost well that's you know, over a year and a half, yeah. Not having that, and then since then there was another massive event. There was um, Hurricane Freddie that went through. It was even bigger than Tropical Storm Anna that destroyed their home. So they've had even worse happen, and haven't recovered from the first one, and haven't had government aid come through and assistance. So it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they've tried to re re you know rebuild. The gardens and, and tried to come back you know and here um you know we're, we're already in recovery mode and the fire is still burning mm -hmm. you know and we're already returning to homes and the people who have lost everything are already putting in claims and and figuring out what's the next step you know and which They've gone through horrible things here, and I don't discount the losses here. The losses here, people have had tremendous losses, and they, they're going to have uh, huge burdens to overcome and to rebuild. Absolutely. I don't discount that. But they have the ability to rebuild, and while they're rebuilding, they'll have food, and they'll have a roof over their head. Mm -hmm. and have support to do that. Right. Yeah, so, um and they'll have a community behind them. What I'm trying to do is make sure that, that these people that I'm trying to help in Malawi have some kind of ability to rebuild as well. Because mm -hmm. no one should be over a year and a half after their home was, was swept away in a hurricane and still not have a home for their family. Mm -hmm. Still not a roof over their head. That just seems inhumane. And, and I think you have you have all that, but then you put mosquitoes on top of that. You put on those. Was it the scorpion? The snake? The snake? Malaria. The snake bite. Yeah. You know, um, and we we don't even fathom that because we can come inside to a house and be protected so from mosquitoes and bug bites. Um, and we get them and they're unpleasant, but they're incessant <laughs> where they are. They're not deadly. You know, a mosquito here isn't deadly. Yeah. A mosquito there is, is deadly. Yeah. 
and um, to be shoeless here means you know you're going to the beach. Yeah, and having to be shoeless there is also deadly. And half the family is shoeless. Mm -hmm. You know, they they can walk to school four or five kilometers shoeless. You know, and that's treacherous. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's really, really a concern. Um, and and to decide whether you know you'll make that that sack of of, of ground maize um, try and last the family two weeks, or if you'll try and cut a meal a day out and try and make it last three weeks in case you don't get enough food, to, you know, for the, that third week. Mm -hmm. We don't generally make those kinds of decisions about our food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People, people have other resources here, even if it's going so far as the food bank here, there's still usually some way to get some other food. Mm -hmm. And I've started thinking about um, when we used to cut the vegetables, you know, you cut the ends off the vegetables because they're, they're a little bit dry, <laughs> you know? or they didn't look as good as we wanted them to look, right? And I'm putting them into things. And I think twice before I discard anything now. And that includes um, off the tops of the carrots, because we even just, we just take those that greenery, that fantastic greenery, and it's not relevant to the carrot that we want to eat. But I've started saving those pieces for soup and spices and um, thinking about how many ways can I use every inch of that vegetable before before I would consider discarding it because it really is not edible? It really makes you rethink things. Mm -hmm. It gives you a perspective about what what is waste, you know, or or do I really need that new whatever? Or should I find it in second hand? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, different things. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, <laughs> I, I know every time you go to start with the next project to work with the Moyo family, the next crisis arrives that you then try to navigate what's more important. Um, so as people are thinking about how they could support with a donation or how they might be able to support with the tea, where is the focus now at this point? So the hope is always to rebuild the house. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding the house will always mitigate all of the other problems. So that that's always the big, big picture hope is um, to raise funds to to build the house. Um, right now, the the I think the, the newest biggest challenge is um, Peter's been diagnosed with diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, and that will create its own challenges because there's no way to monitor diabetes at home there. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they don't have home glucose monitors. And you can't just grab your container of orange juice <laughs> and try to bump up your system if it requires it. Yeah. No, so that's, that's a bit of a learning curve. Um, so, um, Still, sort of trying to figure out how they're going to manage that and figure that out. Mm -hmm. But um, right now, I think just trying to to build up money to hopefully work towards the house. That that'll be the main thing. So, so if people were thinking about how could they support, and that well, they maybe don't have a lot that they can contribute, but if we were to start to collect brick by brick, which I know lots of fundraising events, you know, you buy a brick to support, but maybe people want to think about it in those terms of they could support enough bricks for one wall. They could support enough bricks to, to lay the foundation. Um, and it, then maybe they could look at what they could contribute that way. And I know you were looking at last time it was mud bricks which of course, as soon as the rains became torrential, that was the end of the brick. But now you're looking at a cement version that's yeah. going to be long lasting so that there's 
uh, and building it higher up so they um, don't have that same risk. That, yeah, that's the plan. So I need to, to hopefully find out then a price per brick. Right. So even yeah. for those people that are listening today, we don't have those numbers. <laughs> You're still navigating other pieces. Um, but if they wanted to think in their own minds what they think a brick would be worth, and then thinking about how they may contribute, and then they can say, I'm contributing towards the bricks. And then we could start to see if we couldn't build that because just the tiniest little pieces would make such a difference. They would. Um, you know, even if people were able to, to contribute like twenty five dollars mm -hmm. to start, that would be that would be helpful. Twenty five dollars goes a long way. You know, or if people were wanting to contribute um, towards helping to feed the family right now, that also helps. Like um, say sixty dollars. Canadian helps to buy like the, the big sack of, of um, the ground maize that that feeds the family for about two weeks, mm -hmm. two two to three weeks. They they can buy enough maize that they ground up with flour into a flour, and then they they make um, sort of the the base of a lot of their meals with that. Mm -hmm. For fifty people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they supplement that. Like they catch grasshoppers, they grow cabbage, Chinese cabbage. They grow tomatoes. They grow. I should probably know all the things they grow. They grow a lot of different things themselves in the garden. And David, the twelve or thirteen year old boy works really hard in the garden trying to, to grow the different vegetables and water and his mastermind um, it, a lot of the adults have been quite ill lately um, he's really taken over trying to do that and um, so all of those different things all get supplemented with sort of the, the base maize as the, the sort of the staple of the, the meal and yeah, so maybe when you consider a family of 15, that's not a huge amount of money. Yeah, not a lot. From, from our perspective, mm -hmm. they buy it as grain, as sacks of grain, and then they have to take it to a, uh, they carry the sacks to a mill, and then it gets ground, and then they can use that ground. Yeah. Flour. Yeah. So that's and another so there's two ways and they may be able to to send a message and keep track with you of what's being worked on at the moment as you update the GoFundMe page. Um, so that gives it, them an opportunity to think because maybe they're they are sitting there and you're short, you know, it could be $20 to buy that next sack of food and I know that was the last message I had was we really, really need food and so um, to be able to think about how we might be able to put that last contribution in that takes it over the top to be able to get them those kinds of things or the seeds for the next round of vegetables that they can grow. Um, right. And I did see, uh, but they sent me a picture of, of the tomatoes. Um, so that I was asking what they put with it and, you know, how they like to prepare it, um, which is totally different than how we would think of using tomatoes, but lovely yeah it's very different um they catch grasshoppers to supplement their protein too which is different they they catch mice sometimes to eat to supplement it's very different than what we would do because they have to go with whatever they can they'll catch the yeah. bird i'm trying i'm trying to picture catching grasshoppers <laughs> As a kid, I remember riding my bicycle alongside them. There was no way you were catching them. They were bouncing oh. off of you. <laughs> I know it's it's totally different. And they've sent me pictures before of it. You know, um, they also um, they also buy um, beans as well to add mm -hmm. know, to their to their meals. Um, they buy oil to cook with, and they when they buy it, you know, and I say, how, you know, how do you get that? And they they buy it in. in a, Hung in like little bags, like almost like a baggie, like a little little tube of oil that they use to cook with. 
stuff. And and when they when they eat, like it's all sort of in one big sort of communal pan or bowl that they all serve from. Mm-hmm. It's all it's just a totally different way of cooking, and they you know it's all cooked on a little fire. You know, it's not on the stove. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an open either coal or or wood fire, depending on what they have access to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very different. So for those people um, thinking about what's possible, what they have as an opportunity and how they might be able to compassionately reach out, um, Charlene has prepared, it's the Stephen Moyo's Mission for Change GoFundMe. So if you search for that in under the Google search engine, that's what you'll find. And the latest update is there, but also if you're making a contribution, then you'll know these are the projects that are foremost in in our minds and trying to bring that forward um, particularly to get those bricks built right yeah that that's the next the next hope is for the, mm-hmm. the house and and in building a, a house the impact that that can have is is uh, it helps us to um, improve their health and when their health improves then the kids can be in school more. Um, everybody, if there's separation between the people, there's a reduction in all of the illnesses because there's mm-hmm. less chance of all the illnesses. Mm-hmm. When, when they're not all heading to the hospital so often, that that allows them to not spend so much money on on medical things and, and everything. And then then there's more money for clothing. You know, when they have clothing, there's Less illness because you know they're you know if they've got shoes on then they're not having the injuries that get them back into the hospital because they've got foot infections and it's just so many things can be saved if they they've saved money on that then they can afford to buy the goat that lets them have you know more uh, you know, nutrients and different things or that can buy the chickens and then they have more nutrition and better nutrition and better health and you know, increased health, then they're got better brain processes. So then they've got better scores and education, and it just all everything builds on each other. Mm-hmm. So having that that house makes all the difference. You know, then hopefully you can keep out the mosquitoes. You don't get the malaria. You know, you can keep out the snakes. You don't get the snake bites. It's just so mm-hmm. much. Can- Having the roof over your head and the door that closes. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Mosquito nets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have any mosquito nets for all of them. And a mosquito net costs about about $25 each. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, about half of the family has mosquito nets. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something, too, if someone was looking at the price point, we need to purchase more mosquito nets for the rest of the family as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess in the next little bit, now that you're back home and you're just getting resettled, um, the mm-hmm. next bit will be for people to be able to watch for the updates that are coming and you'll be able to share a little bit more and be able to target um, how we can, because I know sometimes, you know, it, it seems overwhelming even to look at all the things that are required, yeah. but to be able to break it down and say, okay, here's where the, here's where we're going right now. This is this is the kind of money we're looking at for this, and um, put it into something we can all handle. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'll try and do that. Maybe an update of you know, here's a bit of a shopping list, maybe or a wish list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People to have an idea of some of the things that are needed, and here's what they cost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That me. Maybe that would and and so then as people are thinking about okay how does the tea play a role so what we invite you to think about for those that are listening in is who could you reach out to in your community that could need a little bit of a lift and could you invite them for tea or could you stop in for tea could you drop some tea off for them 
and could you create a conversation that would allow you to reach out and just have a conversation and find out what people need and have the opportunity to support yourself by having a really good conversation with someone and catching up and perhaps lifting someone else's day. And if you take that one initiative, then maybe they'll take the initiative to pass it forward. And with the community tea, uh, now that you've learned a little bit about the ingredients, um, we'll begin to share more about how all those ingredients come together and create a really uplifting experience when you're sipping the tea. And we hope then that's going to also think, have you thinking about your own well-being and how when you're sipping that tea, you're able to do that lift that maybe you need each day and are maybe in a certain situation where you, you think they are despondent or there's discontent, some of those uh, emotions that I talked about before. Um, and there was one other piece I wanted to share because I was looking at a chart that I had that I'm just preparing for a presentation and I was reminded that the two emotions that I shared with you, where did I put those cards? So that was discontent and disappointment. And those are just two of the words. Um, those are both supported first thing in the morning. So, you know, sometimes you're lying in bed and you're not sure, you're not sure if you can get out of bed. That's the first part. <laughs> and, you know, just the challenges that might be before you for the day. But when you add these ingredients at the start of the day, that's when the organ systems for stomach and spleen, spleen being your immune system, that's when they're ready to process these emotions. So if you wake up with those kinds of feelings and you know, ha, huh, I'm going to grab my cup of tea, I'm going to take a few moments and just decide how I want to let my day un unfold for me and the kinds of things that I can control. And um, then think about how you actually, through those ingredients, are able to support the system so that those emotions can be processed. And by lunchtime, you'll probably feel a lot different than you did first thing in the morning. And so I invite you to just give that a try as a different way to approach the day. I know a lot of people will grab uh, maybe orange juice or a cup of coffee um, and go that way, but maybe start thinking a little bit about the herbs that are there that could be supportive and then how they might be there for you and they might be able to actually shift things um, before you get to your lunch break. So anything else you want to add, Charlene? No, I think that's that's all I've got. That's awesome. Uh, well, I'm glad that we got to talk. The last time we were sitting side by side on a deck, and yeah. uh, and I was thinking, gee, wouldn't that be something if that deck was no longer there? But I'm really happy to know it's still there. And hopefully next time I see you, it'll be colder when I see you, but uh, it'll be lovely to be able to sit on that deck again and, and have another conversation. So... So thank you for sharing today. And um, uh, any last words you want to share to the audience? No, thank you very much for all the support. And thank you to the Cape Breton Tea Company and Michelle. I really appreciate everything. And just, uh, everybody enjoy your tea. And uh, hopefully everybody you know, makes it through the fires. And, and thank everyone for, for their support and their, their prayers throughout. Mm -hmm. so, it. And there were a lot of thank yous, I know, a reading online, social media, to all those people who were fighting the fires, who came in from other countries um, to try and support, and uh, everybody was very appreciative of all that. So that gratitude and compassion, um, now it's our job to pass it forward. Yeah, it really shows through. And thank you for those people who have bought the tea already, too. I really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. And the way are very appreciative too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, if you're looking for the tea, you can get that from Charlene. If you look Charlene Waynes up on Facebook um, or Instagram, then you can send her a message. She'll be happy to help you in the West Kelowna area or BC area. And um, if you're looking otherwise, you can go to capebretontea.ca. 
I have discovered today that my shipping is an atrocious number on the website. I haven't figured out how I'm fixing that yet. I hadn't realized, I don't know what got plugged in, but you can always send me a message and I will make sure that the shipping is not going to break the bank um, because <clears throat> even to ship one uh, small package of tea is not what it says on the website. So I will be fixing that, so just know that. Um, and I'm happy to send the tea out wherever it's requested, so please reach out. And as I said, I am harvesting right now, so strawberry leaves and grape leaves were coming in. Grape leaves isn't in this blend, but um, strawberry leaves are, and those were just coming in today. And uh, we have some amazing herbs coming up here for fall. Everything is just smelling beautiful, so I'm looking forward to the harvest. So, awesome. Blend. Okay, so to bring it to a close, I just want to remind you that season three, we're devoted to the transformational process that happens when people reach out um, with their authentic selves and they create magic. And so this compassionate living section of the podcast is so important because we want you thinking about how you can be assisting others, how others have assisted you. And we really want to make the changes in this world that are needed and that um, I think that we all feel so much better by by having been involved with. Our season has several publications across the month and we hope that you're inspired and empowered by the stories that come through. And also there's the transformational stories, but there's also the incredible tools and skills that are being shared in each episode. And when you take some of those skills and bring them forward or an exercise is shared with you, you have that. You can always go back and listen again and continue to lift yourself up from it. So we invite you to keep your true heart's desire with love and compassion for others at the forefront of what you're doing. And we thank you for joining us. This is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and I'm wishing you the courage to face your own transformation for the well-being of those around you as well as for yourself. Have a great day.